How much drip is an illegal stick? In a recent game against Brown, UMass faceoff specialist Caleb Hammett, better known on social media as Drip King, had a potential game-winning goal wiped off the board due to an unexpected stick check. Heading into the fourth quarter, UMass trailed this game by one, but a pair of goals lifted the Minutemen to a 10-9 lead with about eight minutes left to play. Just seconds after that 10th goal, Hammett won a faceoff to himself and made the biggest play of the game. Goal from McLean, but since then, nothing. And now UMass starting to take over at the faceoff X. Juice goal! Up the gut comes Caleb Hammett! At this point, UMass had a two goal lead and all the momentum. Then came the stick check. As Hammett is walking off the field, you can see him saying, he called for it, he called for it. He's talking about Brown head coach Mike Daly. Now, if you don't know the unwritten rules of lacrosse, here's why that was controversial. Faceoff guys put their stick through the ringer over the course of a lacrosse game. There's a lot of bending and twisting and torquing of the head, so even if a foe go enters the game with a legal stick, by the fourth quarter, all that wear and tear makes passing a stick check sketchy to say the least. Call it a gentleman's agreement, but you rarely see a coach call a stick check immediately following a foe go goal. Now, that said, it does happen. Last year, for example, Maryland head coach John Tillman called one on Princeton's Tyler Sandoval that wiped off a goal and resulted in a three-minute penalty. But Tillman has a reputation of his own when it comes to equipment checks. Now, back to Drip King's situation. If you watch the officials as they inspect the stick, it seems to pass the pocket check and the hold check. You see them measure it here, and this ref nods his head looks good, no flag so far. The officials move onto the card and this should only take a second to check the throat of the head, but they're talking for quite a while. They're talking, they're talking, and finally they seem to agree on the call here. More nodding and official number 42 pulls out the flag. Now Hammett immediately runs over to plead his case, but the ref shuts him down right away. It looks like he says, you can't do that. But at this point, we still don't know what was illegal. The ref is like, all right, I'm coming. I'm going to give you an explanation. The lip reading is tough, but it looks like the ref says he pulled on his stick. Something, something, something. You cannot touch it. Kind of tough to make it out, but that's what it looks like. And this coach in front cannot believe it. His hands are on his head. The ref comes back one more time and appears to say no, but he touched it before the stick check. Later in the TLN comment section, Drip King said this is exactly what happened and the stick itself was legal. The official was caught on a hot mic saying this. UMass head coach Greg Canella is laughing at this point because this confirms the stick was legal. If it wasn't, Hammett wouldn't be allowed to play with it. So it's pretty clear what likely happened. Hammett's stick was a little pinched after scoring the Fogo goal, and he was fixing it for the next face-off, like most Fogos do, when the stick check was called. And that's why Hammett was making this gesture while the ref was giving his explanation. It looks like he's pulling the head apart to make it a little less pinched. But just to be sure, we reached out to Caleb to get his explanation. Yeah, so pretty much I was just bending the top of the head like to the left, because they always pinch a little bit after the face-offs. Um, and since I was doing that before the face-off, I guess while the ref was about to ask for the stick check, it like technically was a flag or something like that. Regardless, the ref makes the call, says it's a one minute penalty and Hammett is locked in full time. And of course, Brown took immediate advantage of the break in momentum. They tied the game at 10 with just under seven minutes left and scored the eventual game winning goal at the 434 mark in the fourth quarter. There would not be another goal the rest of the way and Brown would go on to win 11 to 10. Had Hammett's goal stood, at the very least, this game would have gone into overtime and maybe it should have stood. While manipulating the head before a stick check definitely is illegal, wouldn't it be a dead ball procedure call leaving the goal on the board? You decide, were Drip King and his UMass teammates robbed of an opportunity to win this game? Or was Brown's Mike Daly justified in calling the stick check and going for the win by any means necessary?